Hi everyone. Okay, so this is another video on the nervous system. This is part two. This particular one we're talking about neurotransmission and action potential. You know, these are some important concepts that you need when we're talking about the nervous system and also um, when we talk about the muscular system. But right now, um, we're going to deal with this. If you have not seen part one of the video, please go ahead and take a look at part one because part one talks about the general structures that um, we see in the nervous system. And it kind of gives you some background. So please go ahead and take a look at that first and then you can take a look at this. Okay, so the nervous system is so critical. It's one of the most important systems of the body because what it does, it controls essentially everything that's automatic about you. So example, you see here, there's a brain. Um, and the brain actually um, sends uh, signals, neuronal signals out to, let's say, the visceral organs. Um, so here I've shown you an example. Here's a cranial nerve, the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, um, that has a division, a parasympathetic division, and as well as a sympathetic division that can actually regulate your heart. All right, so that's one example. Another example is the nervous system can control something very basic about you, like your skeletal muscles, like how you smile, like this guy right here. When I saw his picture, it made me laugh. So I was like, okay, let me put this in. So how he's um, doing his eyes, even the muscles of his cheek, everything, um, all the message that have gone to the muscles, guess who controlled that? The nervous system. Okay, so in the last video, I discussed the neurons and the part of the neurons. Now, neurons use voltage to allow um, a charge or an event to occur. All right, so if we take a look at the membrane potential, um, we're looking at separation of charge either outside the axon or inside the axon membrane. See here, here's a membrane, and there's some channels that have... Um, you know, like sodium potassium pump that can allow the ions in and out of the cell. On the outside of the membrane, we have more of a positive charge, especially during a resting stage. And the positive charge is due to the sodiums that are here. Um, the sodium and the chloride kind of work hand in hand, um, and it depends on these ion channels to get things in and out. When we look across the inside of the membrane of the axon, we see that there is a more negative charge. So inside the cell is more negatively charged, outside more positively charged. And we have the potassiums, that's what the K represents on the inside of the cell. So the outside is positively charged, inside negatively charged, and it's all due to the ions that are there. So when the cell's at rest, this is the potential that we see in the membrane. All right, so here we're just going to take a look what actually happens when there is a stimulus or if there's something that has triggered a neuron, a message is taken in. It could be through a neurotransmitter, which I'll talk about in a second. But the message, the impulse will go here, and then you have to have the message traveling down the neuronal axon. So what actually happens? This is called action potential. Now, let me mention... When the cell is at rest, I'm going to go back for a second. When the cell is at rest, it is at minus 70 millivolts, okay? That's the charge and how it's set during a resting potential. But when we have an action potential, there's going to be a switch in charge. So let's take a look. Remember I said that um, in a resting cell, the outside is positively charged where the inside is negatively charged. This is during resting potential. But when there is action that is occurring, the first phase that occurs in a neuron is something called depolarization. If you take a look here, I want you to see that there is a charge going on, a charge switch, because you remember it was negative. See how this part is? That was negative before. So what is happening? There are some um, ions that are going to be rushing into the cell, the sodium ions, and I'll explain that in a second. All right, so as the message switches, as the charge switches, we see it switches as it goes down, it continues to switch. Now, after the message have passed down, because the message will keep passing like this, the charge has to go back to how it was before. 
And then that's where you have the repolarizing step. I'm going to show you another picture of that. And it continues that way until it goes back to resting. So it's almost like a zippering effect that we see in an action potential. All right, so you remember I was talking about those ions. So if we take a look here, this is at rest. You remember the inside is a negative charge that we see here, okay? And the outside is that positive charge that we see here. This blue represents a sodium. Okay, and remember we have these sodium potassium pumps that will move these ions across. Okay, so as soon as there's some kind of stimulus, some kind of action, either sight, something touched you, or something, some kind of stimulus, what's going to happen is that there will be a charge switch. So this channel will open up, this is a sodium channel that will allow sodiums from the outside to go inside. So there's an influx of sodium that will go inside of the membrane. That is what starts that depolarizing that I was talking about. Notice this switch in charge, okay? Now, as time goes on, it can't stay depolarized. It has to go back by homeostatic processes. It needs to go back to that resting stage. In the repolarizing state, the potassium channels are going to open. Remember, the potassium is already on the inside, okay? So as it opens, then the potassium will then go to the outside. So it's trying to balance the charge. That is what's happening in the repolarizing phase. Now, when you get back to resting potential, they will then even out to how it was, sodium outside and potassium inside. This is what we see with action potential. There's a switching of charge because you're switching sodium and you're switching potassium. Sodium goes in and that causes that positive charge on the inside of the cell. Whereas in repolarization, the potassium, there's an outflux of it going outside of the cell. All right, so this is just showing you the actual action potential and what's going on. And it occurs really quickly. This is time in milliseconds. That is really very short time. All right, so here, remember I said in rest that the cell membrane potential is at minus 70 millivolts. Remember that number, minus 70 millivolts. That's at rest. Now, there is a threshold point. You may have small stimuli that may not trigger a strong response. All right, so if it doesn't cross that threshold, you won't get that next stage of depolarization where a message will transfer down a neuron, okay? So remember that when you get a response like this, this is an all or none response, okay? It's not like, oh, I almost got a response. It's an all or none, okay? You either get it or you don't. Now, if you have a threshold that is strong enough, a stimulus that will pass or allow passing of the threshold, you will get depolarization occurring. Remember, depolarization is when you have those sodium ions that are going to be rushing into the axonal membrane. And that will cause a switch in charge. It will go from negative to positive, And that's because of the sodium. That is what occurs in the depolarizing stage. Okay? Now, when you hit the peak of the actual response, that goes up to positive 40 millivolts, right? Positive 40 millivolts. Okay, I'm not writing this correctly. All right, so positive 40 millivolts, okay? Now, remember, it can't stay at that stage. You have to get a switch back of the charge. So that's when you will then enter the repolarizing phase. In the repolarizing phase, the potassium, which is abbreviated as K+, will then get pretty much pumped out of the cell axon into the environment to try to balance out the charge, okay? That's repolarizing. Look what's happening. Um, let me Look what's happening here during the repolarizing stage. It's trying to get it back to that resting state, okay? But it's going to kind of push it down to a refractory period that will go below the actual resting state. And then the cell will then normalize itself out by balancing back the sodium and potassium. 
All right, so the four st the stages that we see um, in action potential is there's an activation, some kind of stimulus that will cause it a change in threshold. Then it will go to depolarization because sodium is getting pumped into the cell. And then it goes to that positive 40 millivolts at the highest peak of the action potential. And then you head into that repolarization phase. Now it takes it a little bit further under the resting state in that refractory period. And that's when the sodium and potassium will try to balance itself out. Okay, so I spoke about action potential, membrane potential, resting potential. And in order for you to actually get an action potential, you have to have some kind of stimulus that's occurring. Um, I will tell you that nerves, they're pretty much going, they run side by side, as you can see here. Here's one, here's the end of one, and here's another one. Here's the dendrite, okay? Um, what's happening here, there's a little gap. I don't know if you could see it that's right here in the synaptic region or the synapse. They actually do not touch physically. But what actually goes on is that there is a chemical that will be secreted called a neurotransmitter. They're found at the end, the terminal ends of the axons, and they're secreted through vesicles, right? Um, that will then allow it to go to the next or the neighboring neuron. So you see that here, the neighboring neuron. And those neurotransmitters, this is a generic picture, of course, will then dock to a receptor and stimulate a response in the next neuron. So you, these messages are chemicals that jump from one neuron to the other, okay? All right, so this occurs at the axon terminal ends, and these are called neurotransmitters that allow neurotransmission. Now, the predominant one that we see a lot in the peripheral nervous system is the acetylcholine. That is one of the major neurotransmitters in the peripheral. We do find it in some parts of the central. And they excite skeletal muscle, but we do find that acetylcholine will actually inhibit cardiac muscle function. Now we have another type of neurotransmitter that's called norepinephrine that's more found in the central nervous system as well as dopamine and serotonin. Those are found in the CNS. Some of them are involved in emotions and so if some of them are, are dysregulated or not balanced correctly, it can lead to like anxiety or depression. Um, but in the peripheral we see acetylcholine, but in the others, we see norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin. Those are in the central. Now, I will mention to you, there might be a lot of acetylcholine that is being secreted and passed throughout here. There may be some excess that is present. You don't want the excess neurotransmitters just floating. So there are enzymes. You see here it says degradation enzymes um, that will be produced to eliminate the rest of the neurotransmitters that's not needed. All right, so we know that neurotransmitters are important from nerve to nerve impulse, but we do have um, very important um, signals that need to go to muscles to allow it to work. All muscles are innovative, innervated by nerves or neurons, okay? So we can see here this area where you have the neuronal axon meeting with the muscle that is called the neuromuscular junction, okay? And there is going to be a transmission of message to the actual muscle that allows it to work. So let's take a closer look at this um, neuromuscular junction. That's where the neuron meets the muscle. So you remember there's an action potential that's going down, okay? We spoke about action potential. The action potential will stimulate these, uh, in this case, acetylcholine, that's the neurotransmitter to be released out of the synaptic, um, the end of the synaptic region, okay? All right, so there will be um, receptors on the muscles that will receive that message from the neuron. And from that point, you can see here, that will then stimulate um channels, ion channels to open at the end of the muscle and that will stimulate muscle to start functioning or start contracting. And we'll talk about that when we 
get to the video of the muscular system. All right, so the synaptic vesicles, they remember they release those neurotransmitters like acetylcholine through exocytosis. They will then dock to a receptor. In this case, it's an ion channel that allows it to open. And then that will allow a charge change or a stimulation, and then the muscle can function. All right, so neurotransmitters are essential at allowing muscles to move. Okay, so it's quiz time. Let's see what you remember about neurotransmission as well as action potential. Okay, which of the following is are essential for the charges across the neuronal membrane? So what I'm asking is, what is responsible for the charges? That's the positive or the negative charge. So here I have ions, proteins, carbohydrate, lipids, and all of the above. So what's responsible for the positive and the negative charge? If you select ions, you are correct. Okay. All right. So let's see what the next question is. During resting potential, which of the following is the proper charge across the membrane? Okay. Is it um, positive outside and positive, um, this will say inside. Is it negative outside, positive inside, positive outside, negative inside? Negative outside, negative inside, none of the above. All right, let's see. If you select positive on the outside and negative on the inside, you are correct. Because you remember, at rest, you have more sodium outside. And then you have, um, they will then switch over um, when we are having our action potential. Okay, so next question. What is the voltage charge of the neuron at resting potential? Is it minus 20 milli millivolts, minus 40 millivolts, minus 70 millivolts, positive 30 millivolts, or positive 40 millivolts? What is the voltage charge at resting? That means it's not stimulated. If you selected minus 70 millivolts, you are correct. What is the voltage charge of the neuron during an action potential? Okay, so remember, now is action, not resting. Is it minus 20, minus 40, minus 70, positive 30, or positive 40 millivolts? If you selected positive 40 millivolts, you are correct. The depolarization occurs because there is, and I'm going to cross this one out because this one looks almost exactly like the first one. So let's get that out. Okay. Um, an influx of sodium ions across the membrane, an outflux of potassium ions across the membrane, the outflux of sodium ions across the membrane, or none of the above. So what happens in depolarization? Just in case you didn't remember, remember it goes like this. And then like that, and it kind of comes down a bit and then normalizes out. That's depolarization, okay? Remember, that's the part I'm talking about, this region right here, okay? So what is happening that is causing a shift in the voltage? If you said, let me cross that out, influx of sodium ions across the membrane, then you are correct, okay? All right, so the next one. Repolarization occurs because there is, right, it's the same choices. Is it in, influx of sodium? Is it outflux of potassium? Outflux of sodium? Um, this is the same as the first one, so I don't know why I put it there. Um, so which one of these? Is it none of the above? So remember, once again, if we're talking about action potential, okay, we're talking about this phase, that's repolarization. So we're coming back down after that action has occurred. If you said an outflux of potassium ion across the membrane, you are correct. A neuronal response is considered an all or none response. Is that true or false? You know, what, is, what this is saying is that you either get a response or you don't get a response. If you said true, then you are correct. All right, what is essential for transmission of a signal from one neuron to another or from a neuron to a muscle fiber? So I want you to tell me the answer. What is needed for the signal to pass from one neuron to another? If you said neurotransmitter, 
right? You are correct. Neurotransmitter. Okay? And there's different types of neurotransmitters. Do you remember we have in the peripheral, we have um, acetylcholine. And then we have some other neurotransmitters like norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin. Those are actually found in the CNS. So remember, they're essential for transmitting messages. All right, so hopefully you got 100%. And on this important concept of, of membrane potential, you know, with the resting and the action potential is so critical. And a lot of times students mix up action potential. You know, try not to get it mixed up. Remember, there's a switch in charge and then it goes back to how it is normally at resting and it occurs quickly. All right, so let me know how you did on the quiz. I would love to hear from you. Um, just hit a like and subscribe if you want to get future videos on this. But if not, I'll see you next time. Bye.